Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. We have e to the power z equals 1 and we're going to be solving for z values. Now you're probably thinking like isn't this way too easy? I mean we have the solution right away or if you're familiar with complex numbers you're probably going to come up with the solution quickly, right? So am I trying to kind of you know, underestimate your math knowledge? No. My purpose for this problem is actually like one of the methods that we use, even though it kind of looks like overkill. Anyways, let's get started. And before I get started with the first solution, I want to ask you, like, isn't, the, isn't zero a solution? Because e to the power zero equals one, right? Okay, anyways, let's see what happens. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and set z equal to a plus bi and why not that's the name of this channel and it's actually almost all the time helpful so now let's go ahead and replace z in our equation which is e to the z equals one with a plus bi so we get e to the power a plus bi equals one and this is basically like exponentiation with complex numbers or complex exponentiation but the nice thing is we can separate this we can split it into two factors. How? Because the exponents are added, I can write this as e to the power a times e to the power bi equals 1. Great. Now what do you do with the left hand side? Now we are going to use Euler's formula, right? Remember the polar form of a complex number? You remember that? It was e to the power i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. You can also use x or any other variable instead of theta, doesn't matter. Here though, i is multiplied by b. So b is the argument. b is our theta. Make sense? And e to the a, because a is a real number, right? e to the a is also a real number. So we're going to write that first. And then we're going to turn e to the bi by using Euler's formula into the following. Cosine of b plus i times sine of b. Remember, b is the argument, or theta, whatever you want to call it. Great. Now, e to the a is the modulus, the absolute value. So if they ever ask you, z equals a plus pi, what is the modulus of e to the z? The answer is e to the a. Now, how do we solve for z from here. What is z? z is equal to a plus bi. So we need to solve for a and b. That's a system, right? So let's go ahead and write it as follows. Distribute e to the a cosine b plus i times e to the a sine b. And that equals 1. Awesome. Now when are two complex numbers equal? When their real parts are equal. And that also implies that their imaginary parts are equal. Let's start with the reals. So this part needs to equal 1. And since there is nothing imaginary on the right hand side, as you can see, 1 can actually be written as 1 plus 0i, which indicates that the imaginary part is 0 or there is no imaginary part. Make sense? So this needs to be 0. Great. That kind of gives us a system of equations, doesn't it? e to the a cosine b is 1 and e to the a sine b is 0. Now, what can we do to solve this problem? A couple different things. You can square each equation and add them up. Well, I don't think that's going to be very helpful. It's just going to show you, well, it might actually. Why not, right? Let's give it a try. So I'm going to square the first equation, e to the 2a cosine squared b is 1, and then e to the 2a sine squared b is 0, right? 0 squared is 0. Now let's go ahead and add these two equations because we can factor out e to the 2a and inside the parentheses we have the super duper Pythagorean identity which is 1. So this is 1, therefore this is also 1. But remember, a is real, don't forget that. It's not complex, right? Okay, so when you have an equation like this and a is real, this implies that 2a is equal to 0 which means a is equal to 0. Great. You can plug it in and find b hopefully from here. If a is equal to 0, I mean at any point you can solve it, right? 
but I guess it would make sense if I just plugged it in here, right? If you replace a with zero, so let me rewrite this. e to the power a cosine b plus i sine b is equal to one, right? This is what I have. a is zero, so this is one, so this is one. And in order for this to be one, we do need this. This needs to be one, and this needs to be zero, which implies that b is zero, or two pi, or four pi, or in general, we can write it as two pi n, right? Remember, b is also real, correct? Okay, great, now, there's obviously, this is not the only way to do it, let's go ahead and look at an alternative, all right? Cool, so here's another way to look at it. We got e to the power a cosine b equals one, and e to the power a sine b equals zero from these equations, right? Now, look at the second equation first, because it has a zero, which is easier to solve. Notice that a, e to the power a is real and cannot be zero, right? It's always positive. Therefore, sine b has to be zero. This implies sine b is zero. But because of the Pythagorean theorem, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. So when sine b is zero, there are two possibilities for cosine. Cosine b is either one or negative one. Remember, in this case, b is real, so we're not talking about cosine b being something else. Even then, it would still work because sine squared plus cosine squared identity even works with complex numbers. Isn't that amazing? So this is the, these are the two results that we get from our equation. The problem with one of these is that we also know that e to the a cosine b is one. If cosine b is negative one, then we have to have e to the a being negative, but that's impossible. So this is not gonna happen. So cosine b has to be one, and e to the a needs to be one, which means a needs to be zero, right? So from here, we get e to the power a equals one, and a equals zero, and sine b equals zero implies that b is equal to two pi n, right, as before. So when we put it together, let's go ahead and find out what's going to happen, right? Z equals A plus B I. So now we can write our Z as, oops, not like that, obviously, as 0 plus 2 pi N I, which means Z equals 2 pi N I. And of course, when N is equal to 0, Z is equal to 0, which is one of the obvious solutions. And this doesn't bring us to the end of this video because we still have to talk about the second method, but I promise it's gonna be very quick. So we have e to the z equals one and we're trying to solve for z. Remember in the argon plane, one can be expressed on the real axis as this number, its modulus is one, and the angle, the argument is zero or two pi, again, multiples of two pi. So we can write one as e to the power two pi n i and from here, z becomes 2 pi and i. And this brings us to the end of this year. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.